Hi, everyone. You know, one thing that I've learned from Tom Nook and Isabel and Timmy and Tommy and everyone else here at Resident Services and Nook's Cranny is just how important it is to work together to accomplish your goals. And you know what? There's no difference in that in building software. So today, what I would like to talk about is software process. Now, what do I mean by a software process? Well, writing code is, is relatively easy, right? I mean, you can sit down and open up VS Code and start slamming out some Python, and, you know, something good will come out of it, probably, hopefully. But engineering software, that's hard. We've talked about how there are so many steps that go into actually building the right piece of software, building it well, and building it so that it'll last. So one of the things that, that really trips up any sort of endeavor is the people. <laughs> Whether it's the customers, the stakeholders, who don't necessarily know what they want or what they need and they change their mind, and that's not necessarily their fault. You know, sometimes it's our job as software engineers to help them re realize what their problems are. It could be the developers themselves who go off and say, oh man, I have this amazing way I want to build this solution when... There's an easier way that would have cost less money and been less risky that you could have done, but you wanted the latest and greatest. It could be managers who are pushing too many hours or don't necessarily understand the risks of making certain design choices. Courses. So building large software, it, it, it takes on a life of its own. And it's, it's hard to, to keep all of these moving parts together. So in order for any of this to work, when you're working with multiple people across maybe multiple sites, multiple stakeholders, multiple customers, complex systems, you have to have a process. You have to have a set of steps that you can routinely and regularly follow so everyone knows what's happening and what comes next. So a, a well-defined, well-understood, repeatable process. I no. It's good to know what you're doing next. It's good to know when you're actually done with the task and when on to move to the next one. How do you know if you're late? How are you going to be over cost? How do team members know what to do? How do you actually measure your, your progress on the software? It's really important. So one definition is the creation and translation of human needs into requirements and requirements and design, design into code, and then testing and installing, such on and so forth. So. We want to move from idea through the construction of the software into usable thing that then sticks around for a while. Now, all processes have some notion of requirements, design, implementation, testing, and maintenance. Remember the five phases of development I've mentioned many times and will continue to mention many, many, many more times. It's, it, it's split out a little bit more here in this list. So a process is going to have first some way of getting the requirements out of a customer, out of the stakeholder. How do we know what to build? Specification, how do we take those plain English, plain language requirements and translate them into something that designers, that developers can understand? How do we then take those specifications and say, okay, this is the right way to build the software. We're gonna have th this set of classes, um, this framework that we're going to use. How do we actually do the building? How do we organize a team? What, is, uh, what are our construction methodologies? How do we use things like GitHub? What, 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 are, what language are we gonna use? Um, all of these are questions that come up here. How do you make sure you've built the right piece of software, validation and verification, you make sure the software works, and then some way for the software to evolve. So every process, every good process, has some notion of all of these. The difference is there are many different processes that emphasize each of these phases um, to a different degree. So sometimes you're building software where you really need to make sure you get the requirements right up front because there's no way to go back to ask the customers any more questions. So you have to spend a lot of time there. Sometimes you're gonna go through these phases rapidly over and over and over and over and over iterating because you have a customer that you can work with constantly. So you do this, this iteration model. And so, from this idea, different software processes, different software methodologies have evolved. And we can put those process models on this kind of broad scale here. On one side, we have agile methodologies. So these, this, these are things like extreme programming and scrum. 
that really focus on um, rapid iteration, that focus on um, working with the customer over contract negotiation. We'll talk about this when we get to agile methodologies, um, but they're really meant to be um, moving through versions of the software con continuously. Whereas plan-driven focuses way more on, let's get the requirements right now. Now let's get the specification right. Okay, now let's start building it. And what, what you'll find is that there are reasons that you want to use either one of the, this category of process methodologies. And in fact, many methodologies aren't necessarily just agile or just plan driven. They, they, they kind of live somewhere in the middle. No company really honestly takes an exact methodology and then just applies it. They just take the parts of the ones that they like and they, they adapt it to the way they want to build software. So some methodologies you may have heard of, waterfall and spiral are kind of the prototypical ones. We're gonna talk about those later in this video. Then there's a whole host of agile process methodologies, XP and, and, um, and Scrum, and then uh, also some plan driven ones. Uh, I'll show those in another slide as well. So when we pick a methodology, that falls into a category of software process models. So let's say you join a team and they say, oh, we use Scrum here. Well, Scrum tends to be a more agile methodology. And by knowing that, that tells you a little bit more about how you should interact with the team and how the team goes about building software, how much time they spend on requirements, how much time they spend on specification, how much iteration there is. Um, and if they say Scrum, you're probably in more of a, rapid iteration sort of environment as opposed to something that's more document heavy uh, or, or specification heavy. Why might an organization choose something more agile over something more plan driven or vice versa? Some people, you know, if, if you're new to thinking about process methodologies, you look at kind of the options between what, what plan driven and agile mean, and even the words plan driven make you think, ooh, why would I ever want to do that? That sounds terrible. I want, to, I want to build the software. Well, there's good reasons to do plan driven. It's not bad. It's just the way it is. So organizational is one thing. Is your team co-located? If you have, let's ignore COVID for a minute. If your team is all in the same location and in one room that they can all talk to each other and work on the software together and go to a whiteboard, that tends to be more agile. Um, if your team is globally distributed and you have to do a lot more planning for your meetings and you also have to basically pass the software off from time zone to time zone and you don't have as much direct communication, that's more plan driven. That's necessary. If, if you are in an environment where you are relying on the documentation, not necessarily going and pulling someone aside to talk about a feature, that's fine. That's, that's the way large software is built. How is your team structured? Do you have um, project managers? Do you have um, senior developers? Are you have a large team, small team? If you have a team that's only five, six, seven people, agile tends to be better. Why, why write so much documentation with only that many people? If you have a team of a hundred, well, gosh, you're gonna need to have some documentation so that people have something to refer to. How about technology? How does your team like to work? Is your team more of a, Let's get some post-it notes and slap them on the wall and figure out what this design looks like. Tends to be more agile. Is your team one that wants to go into a, uh, a design application and come up with very carefully uh, created UML diagrams, class diagrams, sequence diagrams, showing how the software is going to pro you know, progress? That tends to be more plan-driven. Uh, again, there's reasons you wanna do both of those. How does your team like to communicate? You know, in, in our current COVID world, uh, agile teams are doing things that more plan-driven teams do, such as video conferencing um, and finding ways to, to, uh, to, to still work in an agile way. Usually that would involve things like having a Slack channel that the team is all in and in constant communication or a Discord where everyone is in constant communication as opposed to referring to documentation. How about stuff in the domain? What type of software are you building? Are you building a web app? that um, isn't mission critical, is something that is um, you know, constantly in beta, that sort of mentality where you have a website that you're constantly updating, you're pushing a new version, 
over and over and over, that tends to be more agile. Are you building, I don't know, medical software that's gonna run a pacemaker? That tends to be more plan driven. That's not something you're gonna like, hey, Steve, come on in, we're gonna plug this USB-C in, yeah, no, that doesn't, no. Um, for, you know, safety critical software, airline software, security software tends to be more plan driven. Um, is it a box copy, a COTS component, commercial off the shelf? So is it a, um, a library like Unreal Engine, um, which is more than a library, obviously, but you know, that's something that many other uh, programs rely on. So that has more documentation to it that probably lends itself to be more plan driven. I don't have any inside knowledge into Epic and how they build this. Um, but that's that's probably my guess. There is probably some plan-driven notion to it, while there might have some agile aspects to smaller teams. Um, are there regulatory factors? Um, well, one summer, I had an internship with a company, a startup, that was doing virtual colonoscopy software. Yeah. I was thankfully not on the imaging team. Um, but that software had to be approved by the FDA. So we had a very plan-driven methodology there because we had to generate the documentation that the FDA needed to approve what we were doing. In Agile, if you're doing something more Agile, you're probably not doing something that requires the FDA, the NSA, or something like that to approve your software. And then there's just human factors. What's your team like? Is your team made up of uh, people who, um, want to be in the office and just hang out and you know we're kind of that that garage building the software sort of sort of mentality are you kind of that silicon valley startup sort of mentality that tends to be more agile um is it a bunch of people who you know this is the job i'm going to come in and get it done and i don't really want to talk to anyone again that's fine you know people work different ways um that probably tends to be more plan driven because you kind of want to have the documentation that people can just refer to as opposed to referring to other people. What's the culture at the company? I mean, there are companies that have done a lot to try and change their image or, or even start their image as being a, oh, we're all just here working together and moving between teams and that sort of thing. Um, and some companies that still have the image of, you do this, you do this. It's very, you know, cubicle farm sort of sort of feeling to it. So what is the culture like? What what are what are the people like that are there? Because if you are more of an agile person, you're probably not going to be terribly happy in a place that does a lot of plan driven development and vice versa. If you're a plan driven person and you like the structure of it and you you like working on things like safety critical systems, you're probably not going to be terribly excited about building a piece of software that literally could just break all the time and you're constantly pushing updates to it. You want something a little bit more stable. We need all of that software in our life. So don't, don't think of that as a bad thing. That's something that we absolutely need. So it's important to know that there's not one just catch all process. Like if someone says, what's the best way to build software? There's not an answer. There is a, well, depending on the size of your team, depending on the type of software you're building, depending on who you're, is on your team, depending on how you want to communicate, how the customer wants to communicate, how many updates there are, the list goes on and on and on. There are going to be a host of practices that some might classify as agile and some might classify as plan driven, something that is more iterative, more um, loose, I guess, less documentation, um, more flexibility versus something that requires more specificity up front, something that, that you want to make sure that your software is right before you start coding it. You start making sure that the requirements are absolutely right before you start coding it. Um, and the teams could oscillate. It's possible to do a combination where you have kind of an overarching plan-driven idea, but within that you have smaller teams doing agile things. So. It's important to know that everything is customized. No matter what team you're on, no matter what company you're at, you're, they're gonna choose the, the set of practices that make the most sense for the project you're on and the people that you're working with at the time. So once you kind of figure out where you are, you can start picking out those, those parts of the system that you like, the parts of the processes that you like, 
and you start kind of customizing it for your own needs. Here's some example methodologies that we're gonna talk about in a later video, some agile ones like Scrum or Extreme Programming or your Kanban. Um, I did my research in, in, in XP and I, I, I think there's some interesting things for us to talk about there. And then in Plan Driven, we're gonna focus mainly on the rational unified process, but I'll probably talk a little bit about personal software and, and team software as well. Before we get to any of that though, we have to talk about the common ancestor of the software process. In the long, long ago in the way back time, when people first determined, hey, we need to figure out, we need to do requirements design, implementation, testing, and maintenance, they said, okay, let's do requirements, then design, then implementation, then testing, then maintenance. We, we do those phases. And we just do them that way, we do them in that order. And when we finish one of those phases, we're done with it, and we move to the next one, and then we go forward, and so we have a waterfall. That's the name. That's the diagram. There you go. I mean, that's just kind of all there is to it. Uh, we determined we needed to do these things, so then we did them. Now, the problem with this is if you got past the requirements phase and got into the design phase, the specification phase, implementation phase, and you figured out you got something wrong, well, the waterfall model basically says tough. You're building whatever you designed up front. You can build something new another time. So that's not good. Um, there was no notion of feedback into the model. There's no way of, of, of making changes going forward. It, it was intended to be very rigid. It was intended to be, you do one thing, you lock it off and you keep going. And it also misses some important stuff that we now really, really care about in software, in software design, like risk management or prototyping or, or more about the quality of the software post-release. So, a better version of the waterfall became the spiral model. And so the spiral model was effectively just the waterfall, except in this kind of MC Escher-esque, you hit the end and you can kind of keep looping back up and around and around and around and around. But it did add some extra features to it like risk management. So here, you start here at the beginning and you start planning and you make a prototype and you work through the concept and you come back around, you do a risk analysis, um, what are the pr problems, potential problems we could have while developing the software? Are we likely going to, to, to make the next deadline? You do some more design, you do some more building. Keep going, keep going. And the general spiral model just allowed you to officially move between phases, but knowing that you could do it in kind of a piecemeal sort of way. Um, determine your objectives, identify your risks, develop and and figure out the next phase, review your results, see if you got where you needed to be, plan for that next stage. Did the spot model work? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, again, there's no one catch-all, this is the process you need to use, but it seemed to work okay. Um, and as a historical point, many models do use a spiral base, I suppose. So it's not that spiral has gone away. It's just that we've now taken the ideas of spiral and we've morphed them in such a way that we can add other things to it, which become more things like agile or plan driven. So that's a high level overview of what a software process or software methodology is. In the next videos, we're gonna talk about first, what are, the at, what are the plan driven methodologies and what does it mean to be plan driven? And then we're gonna get into agile and what are ad, agile methodologies. So thanks for hanging out with me. Hope this helped. Of this explained a few things. I'm gonna get back to work here at Resident Services. Make sure that the islands, that the uh, residents here on my island, are having a good day. I hope you're having a good day too. Take care. Bye.